John Preto, uh, and uh, artificial intelligence is, seems to be the thing in everyone's mind these days. I, uh, I've been told many times over the years by my, particularly my professors, that my intelligence was all artificial, and so I thought I knew something about it. But uh, John is, uh, in order to get ready for the, this introduction, I have done uh, a bit of research, and everyone, it's on the tip of everyone's tongue nowadays, wanting to learn more about the dangers and the possibilities of artificial intelligence. John Preto is the man very capable and, and qualified to do that. So, John, let's welcome John Preto. Good afternoon, folks. My name is John Preto. I'm not running for office. Yeah. I'm also a native Nevada and Gorman alumni. Gorman alumni? Yes. Well, since Joe already gave my presentation, did you see him fly through my slides there? He put his papers out on top of my computer. Oh, I, <laughs> yeah. I was panicking. So today, today is basically a, a primer, a primer, as they say in the UK. Uh, I want to expose exactly what Joe said, the benefits and the dangers of AI. Um, and this is very important information I think that we all need to know about. Um, and I'm going to share that with you guys. Here I thought was an interesting use of technology. This is 2005. This was, uh, this was when one of the popes died, 2005. I don't have my notes below here. And here's 2013. Uh, on the election. These, those are all mobile devices, and that's eight years difference. This is exactly what's going to happen in AI. It's going to be everywhere. It's, it's there now. A lot of the tools that you're using now have AI or machine learning built into them. You're just unaware of it. I want to tell you a story about Luigi. And Luigi was an immigrant from Italy, like my family. Luigi was a candlestick maker. And Luigi came over and worked very hard in New York City, making candles. And one day, his friend, Mario, came along. Mario said, hey, Luigi, you hear about this thing? It's called electricity. They're going to put the light bulbs in the houses and on the streets. Luigi said, yeah, what are they going to do? Put the wires everywhere? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. And that's what's going to happen with AI. I'll tell you another quick story. And this is somewhat true. This is CES in 1994. I was walking around, and I come into the Blockbuster booth. It was gigantic. It was one of the biggest booths at CES that year. And I bump into this executive, just happened to be named Luigi. <laughs> I'm talking to Luigi, and I say, Luigi, are you watching what they're doing on the internet with streaming video? People are going to watch video on their computers. People are going to watch video on their computers. Well, we know how that story ended, didn't we? Same thing's going to happen in AI. But don't fret for Luigi. Nintendo ended up using his likeness in the Super Mario Brothers. So I have a happy ending. Okay, we're going to start with some quick definitions. This is probably as technical as we're going to get today. And I thought that a Venn diagram told this story the best. So we have computer vision, we have biometrics and sensors, and then we have this thing called machine learning. And so a lot of people are hearing this word machine learning, which is actually a subset of AI. And so these things that you're hearing about today, GPT, uh, Midjourney, BART, are really machine learning as a classical classification in terminology. AI is a superset of machine learning. And the thing that we all need to be scared about is called artificial general intelligence. And we're, we're about a decade away from that here. Artificial general intelligence. That's when AI becomes at least equal or greater to humanity. And that's when it gets really scary. This is, I'm not going to go over this complete timeline, but AI has been around for a long time, starting with Turing in the 50s. And there's this test called the Turing test that if you're communicating via a chat room with an AI, 
Can you differentiate that AI from a live person? We have not reached that point today, 70, 80 years later, but some interesting things around, uh, on this timeline. Deep Blue beats Kasparov, 1997. It's a long time ago. Uh, the seminal information of AI as we know it today, a paper was published in 2017, and it was published by Google. And it's all you need is attention, is the name of this paper. The fine folks at OpenAI took that information in that paper and created ChatGPT, invented by Google. And so last year, 2022, was kind of the inflection point for AI. And there's a, there's a specific reason why. There's three things in the perfect storm that has come together to cause this thing to happen today. We're going to go over that. But first, we're going to talk about what the media wants you to think about AI. We need to shut it all down. Uh, Godfather of AI leaves. You might have seen this in the news. And, and people wonder if AI will kill us all. Kill us all. Should we drive over to switch communication and turn all the servers off right now? Rob Roy doesn't like that very much, right? Okay, first we're going to talk about the bad things in artificial intelligence or machine learning. Deep face. This is where they can easily take information from you, either, either video, photographs, or your voice. And you may have seen in the news where I can take about 30 seconds worth of audio out of, from your kids on TikTok, and I can replicate that voice, and you cannot tell the difference in that voice. And they're calling folks up like they've like they kidnapped their kids for ransom. This is a problem. This is going on as we speak right now, deep fakes. Information or videos created off of deep fakes, uh, this is a big problem that we're facing. I don't have a solution, but it's going on. We need to be aware about it. Job loss. There's going to be significant job loss. Um, you know, the rudimentary jobs, just as they had, had in the past, gone away. Candlestick lighters, buggy whip makers, etc. We're going to see that same sort of phen phenomenon happen now in AI. Persuasion. If you think of Amazon is persuasive, you know, it's amazing. I'll be talking to my wife about a vacuum cleaner or something, and then two seconds later it shows up in my feed on Facebook. Happen to anybody else? Yes. So they'll match that on steroids and persuasion. Disinformation, this is an important thing. There was a picture posted of the Pentagon, a fire in the Pentagon, a couple weeks back. You might have saw it in the news. And the stock market dropped several billion dollars until they found out that this information was absolutely not true. A lot of disinformation going out there, especially next year during the elections and the end of humanity. I keep seeing this headline. If it bleeds, it leads, right? So this is what we're seeing in the headlines because that's what sells newspapers, and this is what they want you to believe in that regard. I'm more optimistic for the future. Here's some of the good. Productivity up. So these AI tools are going to be super productivity tools to help you, and almost every business will be affected by AI and productivity will increase significantly. Breakthroughs, tons of medical breakthroughs, scientific breakthroughs, protein folding was a big one, uh, material sciences, solar panels, manufacturing, uh, amazing breakthroughs coming because of AI. GDP up, they're showing trillions of dollars, forecasting trillions of dollars of GDP up, just specifically to AI. Education. There's a great site on the internet called Khan Academy. Anybody aware of Khan Academy? Just about a month ago, they did a TED Talk. Saul Khan did a TED Talk. And he showed AI on his new tools in his beta site that he's using right now. It is unbelievable. Imagine having the smartest person on the planet individually educate you or your children. That's what you're going to see in education market. Job creation, all those jobs that lost, there's going to be tons of new jobs created in the industry on AI. Co-pilot, want, I want you to think of AI as a co-pilot. Microsoft very adroitly has identified their product as AI. Sorry, as co-pilot. I looked at Joe and I thought of AI. I got a, I got a slide coming for you, Joe. So, 
AI scares all of us, right? Microsoft very cleverly branded all of their products into their application, embedded in Word, embedded in Excel, embedded in Outlook. These tools are going to be co-pilot, and they're integrated in every application known from Microsoft. That's, that's coming right now. Technological innovation. This is these moments in time where breakthroughs have happened in technology. Gutenberg Press, 1440. First camera, 1816. The Wright Brothers, 1903. And I remembered back to my, my grandfather and grandmother being bored to see the Wright Brothers and then see us land on the moon in one lifetime. That gives you a little bit of perspective. The Apple One, 1975, first web page, 1991. See You See Me, first video application, video conferencing application, 1992. We're continuing this amazing exponential uh, increase in technology. This slide is really interesting because my friend said I had too much text on here, but there's only two things to take away from this slide. This is VC money flow, specifically into AI on the left, and the other side is enterprise money flow. How much money are enterprises going to be spending projected out to 2025? So 10 billion in just in AI from the VCs by 2025, enterprise money flow, $230 billion in enterprise spending forecasted. KGBM is released that number. This is known as the K-Brand explosion. And so remember I told you about those three things, the perfect storm? This is, what's ha this is what happened last year, 2022. New algorithm, those transformers. The T in GPT stands for transformer. It's a new algorithm for a neural network. That was a breakthrough, number one. Number two are big, giant data models. The entire web now. So everything that GPT knows has been farmed off of the internet into a giant database. And then finally, supercomputers. NVIDIA has released amazing new chips that make this all come to fruition. I learned neural networks in engineering school in 1988. We didn't have the horsepower to run them back then. And so there's this thing called AI winter that happened in the 70s and 80s because we didn't have these other two things in order to make these things come to fruition. This is happening as we speak. 2022 was the breakout year for AI. Open AI, now who in the room is using GPT right now? Few of you, 18% according to the last survey that I saw. Uh, Open AI 3 or 3.5 3 or 4.0? 4, yes, 4, good. Please upgrade to the paid version, it's $20 a month. So th this is an interesting story for Open AI. Open AI was co-founded with Elon Musk back in 2015, and th three or four of the other scientists at OpenAI. And their thought was, you guys have this technology, but we don't want it going into the big hands of the tech giants, Elon Musk, sharing this with the other scientists in OpenAI. And that was the charter of OpenAI, was we're gonna make this technology available to everybody. Until Microsoft came knocking on the door with a bag of money of $10 billion. Now I call them closed AI because they're not sharing out their models and information anymore. That's what happened with OpenAI. OpenAI has some amazing stuff that's, that's coming in the pipeline, and also GPT-4 also has image capability. When they launched in March, they had the ability to upload an image. You could upload an image from your refrigerator, and it would, it would tell you what you could make out of the ingredients from your fridge. You could, you could send it a meme, and it would tell you what was funny about that meme on, on the picture. They, later that week, they removed it. But that's coming back. So OpenAI, along with the text, will also have image capability. ChatGPT was launched November of 2020, and 60 days later, reached 100 million users. The fastest growing application in the history of applications. Amazing, amazing growth. 180 million users today as we speak. But they're not the only ones. All the big tech giants, and so I've got these columns labeled, they're probably hard to see, 
So ChatGPT is a text model. It's a large language model, LLM. And so OpenAI, in my combination of Microsoft, that's that first bubble there, they have text, they have image, they have audio, and they have coding. So programmers now are using AI to write code. When, open it, when GPT-3 came out, first thing I did was write me a program and list out the first thousand prime numbers. It wrote the code, I put it in my compiler, it compiled it, and it had the program. Compilers and programmers are seeing in between 20 to 50% performance increase using this co-pilot built into their code. So OpenAI is coding very efficiently, not replacing programmers yet, but it's super, it's making them super productive. Google, Google probably has the largest portfolio out of any of the tech giants out there now. And their hand was forced because they're, they wanted to be very careful because they understood the sociological repercussions of releasing AI into the market, which OpenAI now is trying to wield them. And so when Microsoft and OpenAI came together, Google knew the red flags went off and that they had to giddy up and get their product out to the market. So you're seeing lots of movement from Google and, and they have some serious, serious technology that you're gonna see integrated in. And it's good, it's really good. Meta, that's Facebook. They also have their own technology. Adobe, those graphic artists in the house, Adobe is integrating this into every application that they have. Photoshop, Illustrator, um, Premiere, After Effects, all of those. There's a beta out in Premiere right now. I wish I had time to show it to you. It is absolutely spectacular what Adobe is doing with Photoshop. And a few more here. So here's IBM. IBM is branded under the Watson name. They've got similar technology. They're doing a lot of work in enterprise. Amazon, Amazon sitting on a ton of technology. Stability AI, this, these guys are the leaders in open source. They probably have one of the top two text to image programs on the marketplace. And Midjourney, which is the one I'm gonna show you right now, later in the presentation, I'm gonna show you some images that, that uh, Midjourney is able to generate. Which tech giant was missing from that list of the eight? Apple. Apple. You win. Congratulations. Nowhere have you seen any Apple talk about machine learning. As we speak right now, Apple's having their worldwide developer conference. In their keynote on Monday, they didn't say AI anywhere. They said machine learning. Many of the apps that you're using on your iPhone right now have machine learning, which is part of AI. They've got some amazing stuff that they're going to launch. They're going to be very careful on how they launch this. Look for a Siri on steroids coming soon. It ought to be great by then. Machine learning. Okay, here's the open, for those of you that have not seen OpenAI, this is the interface that looks like on the desktop. If you go to OpenAI and click on G Chat GPT, that's the interface in the middle. There's nothing there other than a little window on the bottom. And then about three weeks ago, they released the I iOS version, on, just on iPhone, not on Android side. And the nice thing about that one is it's got a little speaker there that you can speak into it. You don't have to type text. So that's super useful. And so when you go here, and I urge everybody to go to OpenAI, you got to kind of dig around. They did this on purpose because they, could, they were having trouble supporting the, the traffic. And so you kind of got to dig to get here, and it will make you create an account. And so you'll come here, and then you start asking questions to the chat room. The interesting thing about these large language models is they're conversational. They're not looking stuff up in a database. You're able to ask them a question, and another question, and another question, and drill down. That's one of the significant differences. So just as an example, I typed into the bottom. I said, type in a buy sale agreement for a car in State of Nevada. And it generated me a bill of sale, just like that. Whether it's a lease or any sort of document like that, it's that fast in the moment of typing in one sentence. What can you do with ChatGPT? Here's just a few of the things. Now, ChatGPT speaks in 26 different languages. So everything you type into ChatGPT, you can immediately translate it into 26 different languages. 
It speaks 40 different computer languages. You can write poems, write songs, legal agreements, grant proposals, sales copy. 50% of what you read on Facebook is written in AI today. Write a poem. My wife's birthday is December 17th. ChatGPT had just come out two weeks prior. I thought, oh, cool, I'm going to write a poem for my wife for her birthday. It writes this long poem, I edited it down, put it on fancy paper, put it on book for her birthday. She read it, she said, who wrote this? <laughs> Busted. I edited it. So tons of uses for, for ChatGPT and the other language models that are available. Google's, Google's is, is great as well. This is OpenAI. This is, I know this is hard to read for you guys. This just shows the astronomical growth. I was talking to a few of these before the speech. Um, this is how fast OpenAI and GPT has grown. Now, there's a difference between GPT and ChatGPT. ChatGPT is an application. GPT is the model. So it's the AI model. And GPT, ChatGPT was launched November 30th. It's brand new. And this thing is going like this. So GPT-5 will be more amazing. And, and there's a huge difference between 3.5. If you're not using the paid version yet, I highly recommend. A lot of the stuff that you see for chat GPT is being dumb on their answers. If you upgrade to 4, there's a high chance that it will get the answer right at 4.0. Not always, but a way better chance. That brings me to the next slide. Hallucinations. Here's my robot, drunk at the bar. So what happens a lot is people, you'll see these printed, I see them all the time on Twitter and Facebook, and here's one that I thought was clever. When I was born, my mother was in France, and my father was in the United States. Where was I born? GPT says, based on the information you've provided, it's not possible to determine where you were born. That's a hallucination. And, and it happens. There's some, my, my attorney made me put the slide in, by the way. He's got bad luck with GPT. I don't know what it is. He has a, he has a skincare company, and he put, he was looking for a specific study done on the, one of his ingredients in his product. Well, it manufactured these research papers that never existed. And it will do this. So you need to cross-check it. What I'll do is I'll run it in G, GPT-4 first, and then I'll run it over in BARD and Google and see if it matches or not. But you have to drill down. There was a great court case a couple weeks back where an attorney used ChatGPT and all the references, all the cases that were referenced were all made up by GPT. And the judge wasn't happy. Uh, here's the first thing that all you guys are going to do when you get home, you're going to type your name in and it's going to say, we don't know who you are. <laughs> or sometimes it will make up the story, which is pretty funny as well. Version 4 is better than for version 3, the paid version. Uh, this is uh, reinforcement learning human feedback. On ChatGPT, there's a thumb up and a thumb down. There's 180 million view users of this product right now. You're helping refining the AI as you're using this product. If you do thumbs up or thumbs down, you're helping refining the model, which I think is a good thing. Now, this, this is great. When ChatGPT came out this March, excuse me, one second. March of this year, there's a whole list on, on the site OpenAI where they put several exams in ChatGPT4 and compared against ChatGPT3.5. GPT4 passed several exams. Bar exam in the 90 percentile. SAT 1410 combined, better than me. But my favorite exam that it passed was the sommelier intro certified in advanced exams. <laughs> and here's, here's Perry's drawing of the robot drinking the wine here. And that brings me to the next slide, which is Midjourney. Now, Midjourney is an application that is, has about 14 million users, and it generates artwork. And I'm going to show you some examples. And you type in something that you wanted to draw, and it draws it for you. Here's what the interface looks like. It's got the little chat window on the bottom. And I'm going to type in a smiling robot enjoying a glass of wine. And we're going to compare it. And it draws these four images. And I like, you guys can't see it, it's too small. The one in the back 
it's the little guy on the bottom, but I, there's a button underneath it to make it bigger. And I clicked on it and I said, well, it can't be better than my drawing. And there it is. It's a little bit better drawer than, than I am. Right? So this program is amazing. Here are some of the images that I generated. And here's some of the images that are in the gallery on Midjourney. These are not photographs. These are generated by the AI. These are based upon probably every image that's on the internet, all these images. So it's taken this huge corpus of data, and then you're typing in those words, and it's generating those images. And what's really interesting, there's one in here that people keep saying, wait a minute, I've seen that photograph. That's that gal from the National Geographic picture, right? It, it looks like, I got it. I clicked the wrong button. Took me all the way back. She looks like that girl. Remember that picture? Nope. That's what I used to type into the window to get that image. And that's how great of an image it was. So if you're a graphic artist, you need to learn these tools right now and start using these because they're super, super helpful. So I thought, well, let me take a picture of Elvis and a picture of Marilyn Monroe, and let's type in and see what their love child would look like. And that's what it generated. I was sitting in a wine bar about a month ago, and there was this nice couple sitting next to me. They're in their 60s. They've been married for 20 years. They never had children. I took a picture of both their faces. I ran it in the program, and the lady started crying. She says, that looks exactly like my niece. Great story. So it, it does great on that. And I thought, let me take Bob's picture off the internet. <laughs> Joe, sorry. Let me take Joe's image. This is kind of off your blog website, right? Is that one of the images? Yeah. I said, what would Joe look like as a rock star? <laughs> There's Joe as a rock star. What song would you be singing there, Joe? <laughs> then I thought, oh, well, let's see. How about Joe as a professional wrestler? <laughs> Since the F1's coming up, what does Joe look like as an F1 driver? <laughs> then I thought, well, shoot, Joe, this whole lawyer thing doesn't work out. Maybe you can go into professional wrestling. And I asked Jake GPT, create 10 professional wrestling names for attorney Joe Brown. And my favorite out of this list, Joe Writ of Execution Brown. There he is. <laughs> and, and so in conclusion, how are we doing on time, okay? Just some short points I want you guys to go home with. Think of AI as an assistant. It's an amazing tool that you guys should learn or your staff should learn right now, uh, and it's going to hugely improve productivity. AI makes mistakes, but it's getting better. I remember when Wikipedia first came out, and anytime somebody referenced Wikipedia, everybody would laugh. But it's doing pretty good right now. And I'm telling you, AI is going to get better and better. It's, good, it's scary good. Governance and mit mis mitigation, mitigation of risk is another huge one. The, the CEO, Chief scientists of OpenAI are going around the world now talking to different countries about what's going on and the, the dangers. This is a master class in PR, what they're doing. Um, there's some huge considerations that we need to think about. Uh, they're calling for maybe a global regulatory uh, entity like we have for nuclear bombs. It's that scary. And so this is a conversation that needs to happen right away. So AI is not going to take your job, but the person that knows how to use it will take your job. And that's my time. Thank you very much. Do you want, do you want questions? I'm happy to answer any questions. If you guys want to get a hold of me and ask any questions, john at christian.com. I own christian.com, the website. <clears throat> Glad to see that you referenced supercomputing. And now with CPU architecture running at 5, 10, and 7 nanometers, data rates, clock speeds are super, super fast.
Have you considered the impact of IP leakage of this technology from a national security aspect? Uh, these are the conversation that's going on right now. That's that reference that I made to this global organization because it's as scary as nuclear proliferation. And so those conversations are, are happening right now. So President Biden met with a big group of all of the CEOs of AI about a month ago. So those conversations are starting to happen at this speak. John, my question is, it's my understanding that the original programmer put kind of a liberal slant into GPT. Over time, will GPT overcome that, or does other programming need to be done? It's a great question. And so when GPT 3.5 in November came out, it was very slanted, very slanted left. So the CEOs and all of the, all of the C-suite at OpenAI are left-leaning, but they've done a pretty good job at 4.0 um, cleaning that up. And so um, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing some movement in the right direction in that regard. But when it first came out, it was left-leaning. And so we're starting to see that normalize back into the middle. Hello. Thank you for a very informative talk. I just wanted to mention that I just got back from a consciousness meeting in Parmina, Italy, and there was talk that the chat GPT-4 did meet the Alan Turing test to be able to fool people as being a conscious human-like being. Do you know anything about that? They're, they say it shows glimpses of AGI, but we in the industry have not considered any of the chat programs in order to fool a human being significantly faster in the test. Yeah. Thank you for the information. Uh, I understand uh, factual information stops at a date, uh, 2021, is that true? And, and how does that, what's going on with that? When will this be updated? Fantastic question. I should have mentioned that in the speech. So if you, you, you go to ChatGP3, it will tell you if you search for something past exactly what September of 2021 is where the database stops, the model. It's not a database, it's a model for GPT-3 and 4 stops. So two weeks ago, OpenAI introduced plugins into the 4.0 architecture. So now with 4, if you pay, you can add in the web plugin into ChatGPT-4 and BARD already has integrated it into the search engine. So those two results now are all current information. Great question. John, thank you. Um, the last slide said a, a sentence that's pretty interesting, you know, uh, uh, ChatGPT or a a AI won't replace you, but the person who knows how to use it will. Do you have any resources that would guide or train people on how to approach these platforms or utilize these well? I've, I've seen a couple things on YouTube how to use ChatGPT, but do you know anything out there for that? Yeah, so, so that's a good question. So uh, most of the information you find on YouTube, there's some great, great videos coming out of Stanford, coming out of MIT. Be careful of these, of these AI guys that are out there trying to sell you these seminars on how to use GPT. Those are, those are just a ripoff in my, in my estimation. Most of the stuff you can find freely available on YouTube that will go through most of the information, especially if it's coming from a known resource like a university. So stay on that course and you'll learn a lot. Stay away, I've seen lots of scammers do you know, $300, $400 seminars on how to use ChatGPT, that, that's a waste of money. Um, hello, so I, I read a little into your company, uh, Christian, and from what I understand, it's supposed to be like a, it's kind of supposed to be competing with like uh, being sort of I guess said chat GPT, GPT, and it claims, the claim is supposed to be, it's supposed to be truth-based and unbiased, but from what my understanding, like machine learning models, like no matter what data you give it, like it's gonna be biased based on that data. So like inherently, inherently these machine learning models are, they are biased. So I wanna know like what your definition of like truth and like unbiased is, especially like these days that term is so loaded. Yeah, super question. So we're, we're in the early days of rebuilding out the site and we're adding AI into Christian.com. And we're gonna build up our own models. And so what you do is you use a foundational model that has billions of parameters built into it. 
and then you train it with your own information. And so the information that we train into the model will be information that, that has been that has been reviewed by scholarly based Christianity. And so we've got high, big aspirations for where we're going at Christian.com. We thought it was a great use of the technology to be fair and balanced and true. And that's our aspirations for Christian.com. Thank you. Thanks for the info. Um, kind of a two-part question here. Number one is, you know, Congress has been talking about holding hearings on the AI, trying to get their arms around it. Uh, number one, what we, how can we screw it up? All right, that's number one. And number two is, what are the concerns that they need to have? Super question. So, so over-regulating would, would screw it up, and they wouldn't be able to keep up. So regulation, by the time it gets passed, will be obsolete. So they need to work with the companies. The companies need to self-regulate. And so it, it's going to be a challenge moving forward to, to get this thing regulated. And we're going to build something that's way smarter than us in the next decade, maybe two. And it's going to be scary. And we need to be very, very careful in how this information proliferates. Because as big as these models is, the bad guys can use this technology as well. So it's a complex uh, question. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, we have a 2024 cycle coming up on the election. How am I, or are we going to know the difference between the fake news, the fake information, and the real thing? If I knew that, I'd be a trillion. <laughs> That's a, that, it's going to be really messy next year. But if you use GPT-4 and you cross-reference it into BARD, that's probably your safest bet right now. Uh, but it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. The campaigns are scrambling with AI right now. Two quick questions. One, Facebook. How far have they gone with this and the manipulation and everything? Two, is there truth that Google has a robot based on AI that's awake and one of their top executives quit because of that? So. Jeffrey Hinton quit Google. Uh, most of what I see out of Jeffrey Hinton, Jeffrey Hinton is one of the fathers of AI. That's what they're calling grandfathers of AI. Uh, most of the stuff that I see out of him is, is clickbait and headlines. Unfortunately, the guy's brilliant. And one of the students of Jeffrey Hinton now is the chief scientist of OpenAI. Open Ilya is just an amazing individual. Jeffrey Hat brings up some very critical, important points that needs to be discussed. Google has some amazing models that they're sitting on right now. Palm 2 was just released into the medical community. My dad and brother are both radiologists. In fact, many of you guys know my father was a chief of radiology at Sunrise Hospital for 25 years, and my brother now is a radiologist. So x-rays, productivity for radiologists is going to skyrocket because the AI is going to read the majority of the x-rays and the radiologist will come behind it and confirm the findings of the AI. And he's saying those models on a Google are spectacular. Uh, but Jeffrey Hinton is uh, an amazing guy. I think he's uh, a little too clickbaity for, for, for me. Although I listen to what he has to say. He has some stuff that brings up some great, amazing points. Facebook has a lot of the technology that they've been using for years to make recommendations. Uh, they're building an engine for writing sales copy now when you can advertise with them. They've got a large learning model called Llama, which is we've been playing with that's really, really good. They're sitting on a, a lot of technology uh, as well. That's, and that's that graph that I showed you. A lot of the big tech titans sitting on this technology. And all of them were, were trying to be very, very careful in releasing this because they knew the social repercussions would be big. And OpenAI and Microsoft decided to jump in the water, and that's why you're starting to see all of the companies come out and release products. Too. So Pontius Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? What say AI? You go to ChatGPT4 and ask that question exactly. That's a great question for GTP4 or BART. Um, you, go ahead. You mentioned that Microsoft paid $10 billion to somebody. Who did they pay $10 billion? Yeah, Microsoft invested $10 billion into OpenAI. OpenAI knew that for them to go to scale up GPT-4, their model, it was going to be a billion-dollar infrastructure bill. And so that's the reason why they went to Microsoft. And so, so they got paid for 
but nobody got a windfall from them. They got paid $10 million loan, but they got 49% of the company for this loan. So OpenAI is going to pay that money back. OpenAI has this very interesting structure where they're a nonprofit first, and then their profit company is held by, and they would lock down the returns to the profitable company. It's really interesting structure that I haven't seen structured in that manner before. My question is, is there, a, is there currently a connection between crypto and the monetary system in the world and AI, or will there be uh, in terms of artificial money? So crypto, you know I, what I think we're going to see is we're going to see all this generated artwork have a serial number that will be crypto based, that will be written onto the blockchain and you'll be able to identify an image that it's uh, been generated by AI. But yes, there's lots of cross uh, pollination between what's going on in crypto and in AI together. There's some interesting permutations there. And, uh, right now they're pretty much separate and FTX kiboshed all kind of the, a lot of the smart guys that were in crypto before now are moving to AI. Uh, I'm still long in, in crypto. I'm a huge proponent of crypto. Long term, I think it's, I think it's great. Um, but most of the, all of the brain trust now are crypto moving over to the AI world. Uh, but you will see uses of crypto and technology integrated in AI. Question. Are you familiar with Pi, PI, the personalized chat? Uh, no, I have not seen that one. Just came out. Yeah, too many, every day there's 10 new ones that come out in the marketplace. It's going to be really difficult to compete with the big guys because the model, to, to build a model is it is in the hundreds of millions of dollars today, so it's going to be very difficult to compete with Microsoft and Google uh, accordingly. You're going to be able to take one of those models and build your own model on top of it. We're seeing lots of enterprise use that technology, but there's just so many new applications coming out on a daily basis, I kind of gave up trying to keep track of all those. I haven't heard um, NVIDIA mentioned for those of us that have been lucky enough by accident to have owned it this year, they're very happy. Yes. So tell us a little bit about NVIDIA. Yeah, so NVIDIA was on my slides. You probably couldn't see it because it was so small back there. One of the reasons why you're seeing the growth in AI is specifically because of NVIDIA. NVIDIA had their big conference in March and they showed all the latest, greatest technology. H100 is their latest, greatest chip. And, and this is the reason why they're the seventh largest corporation on the planet. They just reached a trillion dollars. And NVIDIA is the leader in AI. And their application, they had a week-long conference online. They had 250,000 people attend this conference. And the amount of money and that's going into automation and enterprise is stunning with AI and AI chipsets and what AI and what NVIDIA, sorry, is doing in the marketplace is absolutely spectacular. John, thank you so thank much. Thank you, thank you all.